MashaAllah, we have the brothers and sisters who are seated here this evening. I'm sure all of you are trying very hard to pass your examinations and Allah make it easy for you and grant you that degree and that passing, inshaAllah. We need to know one thing. You will leave a mark here. And you'll leave a mark in your own lives. When you leave university, when you leave you know, this part of your life, you will leave a mark where you were and you leave a mark within your own life that at this time of my life I was at this place and this is what I did. So you will have about 10 points, main points that you could always be proud of. Let those points be points of goodness, not points of something that is bad. Many people leave and the only thing they can think about is, oh, I was introduced to drugs and varsity. Yeah, the first clubs I went to was at varsity. Oh, the alcohol, the first ones, the first little that I had was at varsity. Well, that's the highlights. That's the highlights. You're going to go, you're going to take them away. We'd rather say, and I know of so many, I turned to my deen when I was at varsity because I had good company. Wallahi, I know so many people who've turned to their deen at varsity. I'm sure the sisters here would agree. More, more sisters turn to, to deen in the varsity days when their eyes open to the reality than elsewhere. Believe me. And this is why the eye socks that are there, we need to be active. And we need to be good. And we need to not to label people. And not to chase people away from the eye socks. And not to make people, you know, categorize them. That's not what we're here for. We're not here to have big, big debates about the deen. No. We're here to encourage one another to be better Muslims whilst we are in these six years that we're going to be here. That's it. That's what I want to do here today. I'm not here to debate with you, brother. You're... You're Hanafi, okay. Although you're Salafi, wow, okay. And you know what? You're not supposed to be here in the fall of Islam. You're, no, no, that's, a, that's haram. I don't want to talk about that. We want to try and say, develop your link with your maker. You study your deen, mashallah. But as a whole, we who are here at the varsity, we need to make sure when we leave, the points we have taken with us are the powerful points. I fought my temptations. It was not a good environment. It was so bad. But mashallah, I had, you know, sister so and so and so and so, or brother so and so and so and so who were with me, and they kept us going. We never missed a salah. Once in a while, we would talk together. We would study the deen. We, I actually learned how to read Quran when I was there. I was introduced to this and that. There were a few sisters who spoke Arabic. I sat with them and I learned a few words a day. And mashallah, now I can understand the Quran. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is now called achieving. But you've got to fight your temptations to do that. Because it's very, very easy to continue doing whatever comes to your mind. But will you achieve? That's the question. The answer is no, you don't achieve much. You do as you please, as your mind says. So your mind will say, oh, that's a handsome guy. Let me go and sit in his lap. So suddenly we in his lap. No one will say no. People will actually look at you and sit in someone else's lap. Mashallah. You know, nobody, the environment out there is pretty accepting of, of that type of behavior. But we're Muslim. We should be shy. Shy meaning, you know, modesty is a part of is a part of iman. Al haya min al iman. To be modest is a part of iman, and this is why that is what keeps us away from doing this type of thing. What are we going to achieve? I can tell you. I, I can tell you from experience of people who've actually uh, gone through this, where you find yourself, mashallah, losing focus of what you were here for, adversity. And you end up, mashallah, dating someone. That's not what you came to varsity for. You know, if you really want to marry someone, you've seen that really is a brilliant Muslim and for the right reasons, alhamdulillah, no one is saying that's wrong. But sometimes, you know, the environment shows you that someone is good when they really are not good because the things, you know, you see them as cool because they're cool with the, envi with the people that are around, yet it's not actually the religious environment, nor is it the environment that reflects your upbringing back at home. So they won't fit back at home, but they fit for as long as you're here at the varsity. So what happens is, mashallah, people start dating. Or should I say, a'udhu billah, people start dating. And then what happens is, after some time, Oh, the parents say that is very bad and they're all upset and we sent you to varsity and so you've got a problem with your parents. And next thing, you fought them all and you're still married. And then what happened is, it stopped working because now, oh, he's dating someone else whilst we married. Well, didn't you think of that? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then what happened? Now I can't go back to my parents because they were against him. This is all consequence of something we chose to do. But we, were, we may have been free to do it, but we chose to do something. So use your brain and long-term thinking, not short-term. Think very hard. Life is not simple and easy. But when you're making the big, big decisions of life, you need to think very, very hard. I always tell the young boys and girls, 
I'm, I'm repeating this with golden ink today here. Your brain and your heart are two of the most powerful organs of your body. Do not give control of them to anybody. Never ever. There you are. Did you hear what I said? You might not agree. It will come in handy one day, inshallah. Your brain and your heart are two of the most powerful organs of your body. If you have given someone complete control of them, they can really hurt you. Believe me. They can abuse you to the highest degree. The only one who should have ultimate supreme control of that is Allah. Your brain and your heart. Imagine you've given your heart away to someone whom you're just an option for. They've got another ten hearts in their hand. Mashallah. It's happening. And they tell you, oh, you're the only one. That's, that's a line we learned when we were in high school. Oh, my. <laughs> See the laugh? MashaAllah. So we shouldn't do this. We should understand it's very tempting. You know, it sounds rosy. It sounds so nice and sweet. And it sounds, oh, you know, it's the in thing. Yeah, he's a big hunk. You know, MashaAllah. Big, strong, well built. Wow, I can imagine walking with my arm in his arm. Oh, that's that's MashaAllah. That's what it is. Just like you have fought for that, MashaAllah, there are another 200 girls out there fighting for the same thing. So as tempting as it was, say, Ya Allah, grant me better. Allah, Allah, Allah. Then what will happen? You might find a small, you know, little guy who's not that big, but he will honor you, respect you, and put you on a golden carpet and walk with you, and you won't regret it. Allah, Allah. I see you. The smaller guys are all happy. 